Venga. Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to our talk. My name is Raúl, and here we have my colleague Victor. We are both software engineers at SUSE Rancher, and today we're going to talk about how to enforce a secure supply chain on Kubernetes. And let's start by defining what's a supply chain. A supply chain is everything that's needed to deliver your product. If we think of uh, software and Kubernetes attempts that might involve uh, your source code, that you probably are using source control, so you, you push this source code into source control, you probably have a built uh, pipeline that will take this code alongside the dependencies, will create an artifact, which is a container image, and you will put this image into an OCI registry, and then uh, this uh, image will eventually be on production inside a pod on your Kubernetes cluster. So that's everything that's involved in your supply chain. And as you can imagine, there are many threats. We took this image from the Salsa security framework, and if we start from the left side of the image, <clears throat> first thing we need to make sure it's our source code is never compromised. Imagine someone gets access to your source control and pushes some malicious code. This could eventually go into production. And then we have the built integrity, which is the part we are going to focus on today's presentation. We want to make sure that what we build from our source code is what we actually see in our production environment. And in terms of Kubernetes, we want to make sure that the image we build from our source code is what we actually see in our uh, uh, production cluster. And the way we want to do this is we're going to sign our container images when we build it, and then we're going to verify this signature inside a mission controller inside the Kubernetes. So before deploying a pod, this emission controller will verify the signature of the containers. If the signature is satisfied, it will allow the pod. If not, it will reject it. As you can see, there are many threats there. If you go to the Salsa security framework, you can see real world examples for, for all attacks that happened uh, last year. Mm, I'd like to talk about the F, which is a, a blob compromised, uh, a blob modified uh, package. There's a company called uh, CodeCop. And somehow, the Google Cloud Storage credential got leaked, and someone pushes a malicious uh, image. And then people started using this malicious code because they, they didn't have a way of verifying this image. They could have been prevented if they were using some kind of provenance check, like uh, signing images and then verifying these images. OK, so let's talk about signing. Uh, for that, uh, let me introduce Sisto, which is a combination of open source uh, technologies that includes uh, Cosign, that's the tool that we use for the actual signing and verifying uh, container images. Then we have Fulcio, which acts as a certificate authority that will issue certificates that we can later use for, for signing. And then we have Rico, which is a transparency log. It's a transparency log where all the signature will be uh, stored, so we can later uh, verify them. In addition to container images, uh, Sixto also supports signing uh, binary blobs, any OCI artifacts such as hem chart, uh, um, WASM modules, um, yeah, many more formats. And we're seeing a lot of adoption in Sixto, especially in the open source community. Even Kubernetes itself, they started signing all their artifacts uh, starting in version 124, which means that you can verify not just your images, but also third party images if they are using Sixto for, for designing. OK, so let's start about signing. And for that, let's talk about uh, cosign. There are two ways of signing. One is the traditional way, which is using a, a keeper. You can use a cosign to generate your own keeper. Or you can bring your, your picker if you if you're already are using an existing other PKI. That's totally fine. That's supported by Sisto. It also has a KMS uh, support for Google Cloud, Amazon, um, uh, Microsoft Azure, and also Harsikov Vault. So that could help you to store your keys. But there is another way of signing. That's the keyless way. That doesn't really involve it. I mean, it's not really keyless. You still have ephemeral keys that are generated by Fulcio. And then the signature are stored into the record transparency log. But yeah, we will get back to this keyless workflow later. Let's start seeing this, uh, the traditional way, how you would sign using a keeper. As you can see here, we are using cosign to generate a keeper. You need to introduce a private key, that, and then it will generate a public key and a private key. And you need to keep this uh, password and the private key secure. That's your responsibility. You can use a key MS provider. <coughs> that might help you. But yeah, you need to keep it secure. And then for verification, you need to distribute the public key, which is not ideal. 
yeah, as we can see here, yeah, for verification, you need to provide the public key, then you would need to distribute the public key to, to everyone for verification. So now let's talk about the keyless mode. First, still experimental. Hopefully, it will be ready for production soon. And it's using OpenID Connect for identity. OpenID, it's a, an identity framework built on top of OAuth 2. And it allows third party applications to, to, to identify the end user using an authorization server or an IDC provider. And the way it integrates with Sisto is that you request a certificate to Fulcio, which is, acts as the certificate authority, passing an OIDC token. Fulcio verifies your identity and creates a certificate with your email address. Then you use this ephemeral certificate to sign your container image. And this signature is stored in the record transparency log. So anyone can query later this uh, transparency log to verify that the, the signature is there um, and no one has uh, modified anything. And yeah, it has support for automated environments, so it can be integrated in your CI CD environment, as we will see uh, later. So let's see an example. This is how you would sign using your terminal. You type a cosine sign and then the image. And as you can see here, it starts generating the female keys. <coughs> And then your browser will be open. So it requires some human interaction. You will see something like this. You need to log in with one of these OIDC providers. In this case, we chose uh, GitHub. And then once you log in, if you go back to your terminal, you can see that the signature was uh, successfully pushed to the OCI registry and also transparency log. You can see the T-log entry created with index. You can use this index to query a uh, record. It provides a CLI, so you can query this uh, transparency log to see the entry. And also, if we go to our OI, on OIC registry, we can see that the signature is also stored there as an artifact. Um, how can we verify? As you can see here, we don't need any public key. We just need the email address with this the subject. And then the issuer, which in this case was a GitHub. So there is no need to distribute anything, just an email address, which is easier than a public key. And it also has a, a great support for, for CI. It has automatically discovery uh, functionality for GitHub Actions at Google Cloud at the moment. That doesn't mean that you cannot use another CI. You can use any CI. You can pass the identity token to cosign providing a flag. But for GitHub, as you can see here, we are not even requesting the OIDC token. Cosign is clever enough to that, OK, I'm running inside a GitHub Action, so I will fetch the token, pass it to Fulshu, and then all the certificates will be generated for, for us. And then the way we, we verify this, it's uh, the issue in this case was a GitHub action. And then we have the information about the workflow. So we need to check uh, which workflow we trust. In this case, it's uh, the one we use for generating this. OK, so we now know how to sign and verify images using Sisto. Let's see how this fits together in Kubernetes, how we can verify this inside of an admission controller. Uh, yeah, for that, I'll hand over to Victor. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Raul here has given us a, a primer on how to sign and verify with Sixtor, which it's a, a vendor neutral effort from the Linux Foundation. So uh, everybody is welcome to, to use it. And yeah, how do we make it work inside of a cluster? Well, let's see a cluster. Here we have a cluster, no? Uh, we can see the blue part, the blue box, which is how a Kubernetes cluster would be. Uh, we have the happy users there to the left, and then ATCD to the right, which once the requests come by and so on, uh, the, 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 the info gets saved on ATCD and gets t uh, taken by the reconciler loops of uh, Kubernetes, and things happen. And Kubernetes provides us with uh, one thing, which is called the dynamic admission control. We can just use a dynamic admission controller. For those that uh, don't know, maybe here uh, in this conference um, you are not so... Uh, used to Kubernetes. A dynamic admission controller, what uh, allows us is to uh, connect some webhooks to the path of a request. So we have the webhooks there for mutating and for validating. And with those webhooks, we can just change the, the request or validate it. For example, let's say that you uh, try to put a pod in the cluster. So then it's a JSON request, no? The JSON request that specifies some uh, keys and values on the pod, on the, on the JSON, and so on. So then the user... Um, sends that JSON request to the Cube API, goes through authentication and authorization for that user, and then it arrives to the mutating admission part. There, we want our pod to 
to uh, have an annotation with prod. Because that's what we want. No, we want our cluster to have, to have everything annotated, uh, annotated with prod for a specific namespace, for example. And that's what we do here. We, we are there on the webhook. We wait for the request to arrive, and then we change it and add the prod, annotation prod. Then we go to schema validation, which uh, there is where the JSON gets checked again and see that the JSON is conformant with the schema. And then we go to the validating admission part, where we have other webhook, where we check that the annotation actually is prod and not maybe uh, test. And with that, uh, yeah, it passes on and goes to etcd, and we have our, our pod, or our happy user has our pod. OK, this is the, the concept of dynamic admission controller. We need uh, a specific one. No? We, we need one to enforce the signatures and verify the signatures. In our case, we're going to use Keywarden, because it's the one that we are used to, and it's the one that we are uh, building. So yeah, it's the same. You would have uh, a project. In this case, it's Keywarden, which is a policy engine. There's other policy engines. Maybe you know uh, of others. And in our case, um, the policy engine has policies, and those policies are written in WASM. We will talk about WASM later and why it's important for designing and verifying and simplifies things. And in the case of uh, Keywarden, it's written in Rust uh, mainly, and also the controller is written in Go. And the policy server, uh, being Rust, needs uh, some libraries, so they work with Sixtor. Uh, in our case, for, for Rust, we didn't have any Sixtor crate, so we built a, a Sixtor crate. And we, we contributed it upstream to the Sixtor organization. And now it's taking a life, a life of, of, of its own. So if you are into Rust, please check the, the Rust uh, crate for it. And we are talking about policies uh, being WASM. What does that mean? Maybe you, are, you know about other uh, policy engines that work with OPA or Rigo and so on, which are domain-specific languages. But being WASM has other benefits besides that. For those that don't know about WASM, WASM is small. It's just a binary uh, instruction format. So imagine it as an architecture. No? You compile against WASM, and then you get a binary, and then the binary is super small compared to other architectures, and then you just run it wherever you want. Uh, why can't you run it wherever you want? Because um, uh, it's a VM, a VM that comes from the browser world. So it's quite secure. It has very little things open to the, to the outside, and you can just connect to the outside using um, a POSIX, uh, POSIX uh, way of working, a POSIX-like syntax, and so on. It's also polyglot, because being just an architecture, you can compile a lot of languages. You can compile Rust, Go, Swift, uh, even Rigo policies, and so on, OPA policies. This is great, because it allows you, I mean, maybe you don't know about OPA, or maybe you don't know about Rigo, but for sure you know some language, no? And maybe you have uh, your colleagues knowing a language already. Then just keep using the libraries uh, of that language. Keep using your pipelines in whatever CI you have, and so on. And writing policies, either in Rego or whatever, it's pretty simple, because you just take a JSON uh, object, check for a value or two, and then return true or false, or maybe change a bit the JSON. So it's not like rocket science, in a sense. So it's doable. And by using all of that, you can just integrate it in your CI CD, and so on. One thing that is important here for uh, signing and verifying is that um, WASM modules, the WASM binary, no? uh, those are first-class citizens in OCI registries, the same as container images or the same as Helm charts. So now you start seeing that everything kind of like starts be coming together. And apart from that, uh, being just a binary, a WASM binary, you can, you can just run it outside of Kubernetes, which is great because, you know, just getting a Kubernetes cluster just to test a policy, just to see if something in one JSON, nah, just run it outside, no? It's very simple, and that's it. And personally, maybe this is a bit off topic, but personally, I start seeing, there's some talks there, no? That that talk about the complexity of computer science. No, it's like everything gets more complex and more layers and so on. With WASM, being that you, it's already secure and contained, you maybe can reduce your layers, the, the amount of layers that your whole stack has, which it's nice. And uh, it's picking a bit, uh, a bit of steam everywhere and so on. But yeah. So coming back no, to signing and verifying and, and making your uh, whole cluster secure. Raul has talked about how to sign and verify images with, with Sixtor's uh, cosine CLI. Well, you know, if you know how to verify and sign container images, you know how to verify and, and, uh, and, and check the policies, because they are just 
an artifact in the registry. So in this case, it would be cosine sign and then cosine verify. You would go through the whole thing. Of course, it's difficult to explain. No, we don't pretend to explain cosine and six store in five minutes in a presentation, nor you should get the whole thing, but it's doable. And in the case of our, our, our policies, we can just check them outside of the cluster with KWCTL verify, which is uh, a CLI that we provide. For the policies of, of Qwarden, we have a hub uh, there in hub.qwarden.io where all the policies are marked as signed or not, and then you can just check those, those things. Uh, so far, only the Qwarden uh, devs policies are signed, but I suppose in the future it will expand. Okay, we have signed our policies. How do we ensure that the policies but how, we, do we, how do we check the signatures inside of the cluster? We configure Qwarden for that. Qwarden being Helm charts and so on, you just uh, have some configuration that you put in a config map, and in this case it's pretty simple. Uh, you can get it uh, with uh, our little uh, utility to get the, the, the thing. And here is where we start seeing patterns, because this seems somehow simple, but there's some best practices that you need to, to follow. Here, um, uh, Raul has talked about issuer and subject, but here we are going a step forward and saying, okay, if it's something from GitHub Action, then we can just look at the owner and the repo, in this case, Qwarden. Everything that comes from the Qwarden organization in GitHub would be uh, checked and, and verified, and that's it. Because there's little details um, on how things work that may come to bite you. So that's why having uh, best, pra best practices, uh, it's a good idea. Okay, we have our cluster deployed. We have signed our policies. Now, we, have, we are verifying all the policies. All the poli policies that end up in the cluster are verified. So if we use them now to, to check other things in the cluster, we can start trusting them because we are building our own just chain of trust. And now we need all the images inside of the cluster to be, to be verified and trustworthy. We can do that with the policy. In this case, we are using this policy that we have written with the RAS SDK, but you could just write your own and use whatever language that you want with the SDK that we provide, and that's it. This policy seems simple, no? Uh, it's a policy that looks uh, on the pods for containers listed there, so it's going to be containers, init containers, and ephemeral containers, no? That's all the things that go inside of a pod, could go inside of a pod. And you get the, the JSON request, and the policy decides looks at the, at the signature of the container, and maybe it says, no, I don't know this, this person, this organization, rejected. But then it can be fine, and then it approves. But, ah, there's a trick there. Imagine that you are just um, verifying an image, up example, with the tag 1.0. The tags are mutable, aren't they? No? You can just push uh, today a tag 1.0, but tomorrow you can push again the 1.0 and rewrite it. So then you should not trust the tags themselves, never. What you need to do is check for the, for the signature and check for the signature of the digest, which is the checksum of the image. And then what you do is mutate the, the, the JSON request that contains the pod and append the digest, the checksum, to your app example version 1.0 and then the checksum. So you know that you are instantiating only the things that you want to instantiate and nothing gets changed below. Okay, we have talked about the policy. Now, how does a policy get instantiated no? in the cluster, a keyword and policy? Well, it's, it's a custom resource, cluster admission policy there in line three. You have the spec, spec.module that points to your policy uh, wasm module, which is kind of like a container image, no? you remember, because wasm modules are at the same level as container images. The rules then, we are uh, putting it for pods, for operations create and update when you change a pod and mutating true because we want to make it change the, the digest, and then some, some settings, no? In this case, the image has an asterisk, so it would try to, it would check for all the images that end up in your cluster, and in this case, uh, it could be uh, the GitHub action and so on, but we can also use the issuer and subject. Here we are looking for uh, the subject that comes from GitHub Actions. You can see the whole URL, no? Imagine if we get an asterisk after um, github.com bigquad. Then only that user would be trusted, and everything that comes from that user would be, would be trusted. Here we are only trusting a specific tag from a specific pipeline that comes from GitHub Actions and so on. So we do a kube control apply of that policy. We wait. 
we can just, it's a CRD, it's a custom resource, we can just do a control get and see the list of them. And once, once uh, here at the end to the right we see status active, then that policy is protecting and enforcing. What happens if we try to instantiate a pod with untrusted images? This is a pod that comes from somebody and it's not signed, no? Then you can see there we're gonna do kube control apply and it's gonna be saying pod nginx not accepted. Verification of image nginx failed. No signatures found for image. It's not signed. No, it's not gonna get into the cluster. It's just gonna get rejected. The user is gonna get here a, a one as a return code and that's it. And for the case of a, of a, of a pod that has container images that are signed, well, we do the thing, it's transparent to the user, and that's it. And you can see, if you look at the, at the specific pod, you can see now that it has the digest appended. Yeah, the last line, maybe it's a bit uh, small there, but yeah, it's just the URL of the, of the container, 0.1.0, and then the, the digest appended there. Okay, what's next? We have talked about Sigstor. No, I mean, there's a lot of problems with the secure supply chain. We need to check it. And, and verify the supply chain. We have talked about uh, Sigstore and our own images, but we have not talked about dependencies. How do you handle dependencies? Well, do, what you need to do is uh, append a software bill of materials to your container images. That uh, software bill of materials will contain just a list of your other image layers that you are depending on, uh, what are the, 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 the projects that are there, libraries, and so on. And that's uh, partly already in Cosine and, and Sigstor, and we intend to put that also in Qwarden. Also, uh, we need to uh, sign and verify everything. If you get something from this talk, please uh, be uh, the Sigstor uh, vendor ne uh, neutral um, coming from the Linux Foundation and how everybody depends on something. No, we, we don't have our own stack on our own. And we all depend on some dependencies. And those dependencies need to be signed and verified if we want everything to be secure and we want just to trust the whole stack and kind of like forget about it. So if you're interested in this, think about signing and verifying. Uh, with Cosign, it's quite easy and, and simple, so it's doable. And for us in Qwarden, it's expanding the CI integration also for Qwarden and Sigstore upstream because uh, it's really uh, nice when you can just take the OIDC tokens that come from inside of the CI, for example, in GitHub, or from your cluster, if you are uh, passing the, the IDC token by exposing the token inside of the node and so on. But it would be nice no, to have the same ability for, I don't know, GitLab, because it's open source, well, uh, it's, uh, it's open. It would be nice to have it for other uh, CI um, schedulers, drone, uh, Tecton, and so on. And that's one thing that should, that should improve. And yeah, with this, I think that's it. Um, if you're interested in Sigstore and, and secure supply chains, please uh, come by and stop us later. If you're interested in Keyword, then have a look there. Uh, you can see the information there, the, the Slack channel just uh, to ask some questions and so on. And now um, we are open for questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Yep. <laughs> Yes. So the question is, um, okay, I have used Notary before for signing images. How, how, is, how is this different uh, compared to, to Sixtor's uh, workflow? Yeah, it's a complex question, no? Uh, what did you need for, for Notary? At the end, you were, um, you were signing your images, no? And you were giving your users some public key to check. What would happen if um, your private key got compromised? You would need to uh, revoke your public key somehow, no? It's kind of like this public-private uh, key cryptography thing. How do you, how do you ensure that the, that the users end up with the revocation certificate at some point? Because they could just not care no, about the revocation certificate, and then you are in problems and so on. Um, Sixtor, it's, it's a difficult topic. We can talk about it later. Let me just put here the whole... Uh, <laughs> the whole um, diagram. Um, Sixtor works by uh, delegating the, um, the trust to the transparency lock and by using um, a key 
that is ephemeral, so you only have the key that you had, the private key and so on, in Sister, you also have it, but you only are going to use it for the 20 minutes that you can sign things, and then it gets discarded, and it cannot be used more, because the, sign the signature goes into the transparency log, which means that people in the future could just see that with that key, you only sign at that specific moment that allows you to sign and not later, and it would not be uh, validated. So that's one kind of um, attacks that are uh, not um, there. By doing all of these um, dance with the full share certificate authority and so on, you can delegate some trust into your OIDC, into your OpenID Connect um, service. Maybe your organization has, is big enough that has an open IDC uh, service. Maybe it's, I don't know, open source Okta or, or things like that. Or maybe it's GitHub or maybe it's whatever your, your organization uses. Or maybe you are super small and you don't have that, that capability on, on having that infrastructure. So you can delegate to GitHub uh, or IDC and delegate all the things. And then you, at the end, you end uh, trusting GitHub. But if you are small that you are building also on the GitHub builders, you are already trusting GitHub. So what's the difference? And you are using GitHub as a, as a source for So you are already trusting GitHub. So what's the, you are not shifting so much trust. But it allows for, um, in open source, no, everything is distributed. It's not so centralized. And you have a lot of dependencies coming from different parts. And big players and small players and this way of working allows for small players to be signed because you need all the dependencies to be signed for the whole security of the supply chain to be there and so on. So we can talk about it. I'm so sorry if I'm just expanding too much. We can talk about it and we can, if you want, we can sit and we can go through the whole diagram on what uh, it means for Sixtor to, to do this. But it would take some time. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. It's uh, making, as, as, as Raul has, has said, well, I need to go back. The signature is stored into the OCI registry as another artifact. So there is no additional overhead to the existing image. It's just this new artifact, which is quite small, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a JSON with, with some strings, and that's it. So what, four kilobytes? Yeah. I just wanted to show. Yeah. This one, no, one less. But we don't have the, the yeah, you, you, have the, you have the image here. This is in, in the OCI registry of GitHub, no? You have here the, the image 0.1.0, and then you have another tag, which, is, which ends in .seek, and the first part is the checksum of the image of 0.1.0, and that's, that's it, another tag on the image, and it's super small. Yeah, you have a point there. So the question is, uh, OK, you are trusting on the whole thing, but you are also trusting on Fulcio and Record, which comes from Sixtor, and they are services running on the web. And they are uh, a registry authority. Fulcio is a registry authority plus a certificate authority. What happens if those get compromised? You now have a new vector no? for, for a compromise. OK, yeah, that's a good point. First, uh, Fulcio and Record, uh, which are the transparency log and the certificate authority, the code is open, and you can run your own for starters, no? Uh, second, um, all the utilities can be redirected to your own full show and record uh, services. Third, we go back to, OK, if I'm small enough, I cannot run my own <laughs> certificate authority. Then I'm going to delegate. But if I'm all s small enough, maybe I'm already delegating on, on a lot of things. I, I, I take things from GitHub anyways, or I build things on GitHub, or I build things on AWS, or whatever. No? And if you are big enough, then maybe you just deploy your own full show and record, and so on. And maybe you say, yeah, not even that. Then I can just go back and go back to the public key and private key authority, um, the, the way of working. And then you don't need pools, you know, record, or so on, and you have the, the escape hatch if that's what you would prefer. So that's possible. 
for sure there's something. If the district store guys would he uh, hear us, no, it, they were going to say, yeah, you're missing this and that, that actually helps. But yeah, that's it. Any more questions? Okay. Then, I think that's it then. Many thanks. Thank for your you.